I thank you all for that. It was about a year ago, uh, today, roughly, that it hit me that I was going to be gone from home for a year. We had a going away party, and my brother and sister-in-law and their kids showed up wearing Twins gear, Minnesota Twins, a baseball team, and we had a going away softball game. So we all thought, oh yeah, that makes sense. Some families like to match, they're wearing Twins gear, okay. But at dinner they announced that they were having Twins uh, in October, which has happened since I came. And suddenly that announcement made it sink in. Oh, a lot can happen in a year. Um, and indeed a lot has. So in that moment, it hit that we were going to be gone and we were going to be in a new place. And the other day, I had another one of those moments. I went out to eat with Adeline and Seth. Adeline and I and Seth spend a lot of time together. I'm looking for them. I can't find them. Um, because we both work for the church, do a lot of things for the church, so we spend a lot of lovely and working together. And Seth and I have been buddies throughout the year. Uh, but as with children, it often happens that in the beginning of the day, in the beginning of the car ride, whatever it is, they're very shy. Um, but then by the end of the ride, you're best friends. And so that's how it's been going with Seth and I together. The other day, he got out of the car and he ran up to me and hugged me. Um, and it was like, yeah, we're best friends at the beginning. And we're close enough at this point. We've had a year together, so we can get over that shy bit in the beginning. And suddenly it hit me. Sorry. I'm transparent. I cry. Sorry. Uh, it hit me in all these relationships that suddenly, uh, thank you, suddenly aren't going I'm not going to have time with you all anymore, and and that's hard because uh, I love you guys, and it's been a wonderful year. So I want to thank you for welcoming me, uh, for showing me that care, that compassion, for inviting me to this community. It's been wonderful. So leaving is hard. A lot has happened this year, uh, and these are some of the things that have been going through my mind. Some of the memories. Uh, in the beginning, you know, it's hard when someone new comes. Who's this new girl? What's she doing here? Where does she come from? What's she like? Does she have a sense of humor or not? Can I relate to her or do I even want to? And then, uh, as we get to know each other and grow closer, share time together, spend time together, uh, relationships develop, and that's beautiful. And some of my most fond memories I'm going to share with you. Uh, little snippets that have been flashing through my mind over the past several weeks. Like when Beth Ann had a uh, fabric making workshop here and we dyed and Camille threw together this beautiful bread and fish basket painting in like 10 minutes, which is something more beautiful than I could create in like 10 hours. So I was really impressed. Um, moments like a life group Christmas party when Christine was dancing wearing reindeer antlers, uh, which is a beautiful image that I will never forget. Uh, celebrating Christmas with the life groups. Images like going to uh, a Boston alum with Rachel last week. Uh, moments, awkward moments like youth group a few weeks back with Timothy, Noel, and Chica where I was, we're going through the story of Jonah and to illustrate that Jonah was called by God to go one way and then got up and ran the other way. I did that, got up from my chair, said, it was good. God called me to go this way, but he went this way. I ran this way, slipped, tripped over my mug, it shattered across the floor, and it was incredibly awkward for me, and the guys all just went, mm-hmm. Moments like going to a 
drum circle with Suchu, which is one of the coolest things I've ever done, and I recommend it all for you. People from the community gathered and made music together, and it was incredible and mind-blowing. Um, moments like John Ben leading the Holden Evening Prayer for First Friday worship, which was this beautiful blend of the community here and my community uh, back at seminary, where we do that once a week, oftentimes, and suddenly these two worlds that seem so far apart sometimes are in one room, and it was amazing and really powerful for me. Moments like two weeks, this has to be a God thing, like two weeks after I was here, uh, I was invited, Zach and I were invited to visit the church in Penang. Uh, and we went, it's just us two wandering around, trying to sort our way around the city. And then I hear my name being shouted from behind me. I'm like, I've been in Malaysia for two weeks. I'm in a new city on an island. I'm not going to know anybody. And it ends up being Mofo. <laughs> And she kidnaps, kidnaps us and takes us around Penang and uh, introduces us to some fantastic food. And she proves me wrong about how small the world can be sometimes and that we can know people in random places. Uh, so unforgettable experiences. Uh, what else is floating in there? Making wontons with Auntie Long, if you are here. Uh, Tell me that to more on Monday. Oh, She's okay. Coming back to me. She's coming back. Uh, she showed me how to make wontons, and that was really, really cool. Uh, Zee Wei taught me how to make a whole bunch of Chinese food. <laughs> and just all of these fantastic experiences, things that happen uh, in church, during worship, worshiping with you all, Stations of the Cross during Easter was phenomenal, some of the best time that I spent. Uh, here, as we all just sat on the floor and cut things out of paper and had intense conversations and ridiculous conversations and learned how to be a community together. It was fantastic. And these relationships are still developing, I'm still meeting new people in the final days. On Thursday, two little kittens showed up at my doorstep and have not left. They make me late every time I try to leave because they're so tiny that they slip right in the door and then I have to chase them around the buffalo and get them back outside. So if anybody wants kittens, there's a random plug. So all these relationships have been on my mind. And some of you may be thinking that's a silly way. Uh, you're supposed to be preaching, so preach, girl. Um, but I think it all has to do with God because God brought me here and God brought you all here and uh, that's something that we have in common and God works in our relationships and brings us together. So all of this has been on my mind and that leads us to today. Welcome to today. So there's two reasons why I'm excited for all this being on my mind text that we were we have today in the lectionary. The lectionary is, has been a place for hundreds of years now. Uh, and every third year, at this week in the year, we will read this text. So it's kind of random, uh, but also not. But I like this text because, for one, I think it's about relationships. And that's what's been on our mind. What is on our mind influences how we read scripture. Uh, if you read the same passage on a different day, it'll mean something different to you. And so, yes, relationships. Another thing that I think is really awesome and hilarious and ironic and very strange. Several weeks back, Ang Sui and Priscilla asked me a question. Also searching, don't know if they're here. Asked me a question about the Lord's Prayer and the doxology at the end. For that is the power and the glory forever and ever amen. And the fact that it's not in this text, and when did it get there, and why is it there, and why do we pray it, why do we attach it to the Lord's Prayer? And it was a big history question, and history is not my 
junk food. Uh, so anyway, we had a conversation about that, and so we pointed out, you know, I bet that's going to be your graduation question. <laughs> if you get your internship and you can't answer that, then you're probably going to have to read it the whole year. <laughs> so you should look that up. And then, lo and behold, final week of internship, Lord Square in the gospel. <laughs> so, uh, very interesting. So, moving right along. I think our gospel lesson today is about relationship. The disciples show up and they ask God, they ask Jesus, um, teach us to pray. And Jesus begins the prayer, our Father, emphasizing that relationship. And all the bits that go after that uh, about there's this, he shares this story about a man who perseveres in knocking on his neighbor's door, which makes me think of three weeks after I arrived, there were there was an absurd amount of bugs inside my house, a colony was erupted in my bedroom. And I didn't know what these bugs were, and I was a little terrified. And I call up Elsa and Adlin at like midnight. So that's me knocking on someone's door <laughs> at that time. Uh, please help me. Um, but we learned about perseverance, and actually, the the Greek word is more like shamelessness. This shamelessness, this willingness to ask, even when it's at ridiculous hours. This willingness to uh, impose on our friend when it may not seem like the wisest thing to do. And Jesus shares this story when he's talking about prayer. And sometimes this gets turned into perseverance if we pray uh, a certain number of times God will answer our prayer. I think that's not the way to view it. Because we can't really understand if I would have prayed ten more times about this, it would have happened. And I think God is God's ways are higher than our ways, and it's not it's more complicated than that, right? Uh, but instead it's about shamelessness. And here's why I think it's about shamelessness. Our God is crazy amazing, crazy powerful, just like out of this world, created the heavens and the earth. Uh, can speak things into life, like uh, regardless of how life came into being, is involved in that, is present in our lives, cares about each one of us, billions and billions and billions of us, and knows our innermost thoughts, knows the hairs on our heads, knows uh, what we had for breakfast and what our deepest fears are, and and even the tiniest thoughts that we don't even notice, God knows all this. And God invites us to call him Father. How does that even work? God is amazing and says, you can come talk to me whenever you want. You can be wearing anything you want. You can be standing in any posture. You can be sitting on the toilet or driving in the car. You can be hungry. You can be full. You can be with other people or on your own. You can speak in whatever language. You don't even have to use words. You can come to me, and I think that's, that's about shamelessness. That's about putting all of our expectations out there and just, you can ask me. Yeah. Grace is on your end, by the way. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, stories. I shared lots and lots of stories or glimpses of what's going on in my mind. And that's about relationship. And some people might be sitting there thinking these stories have nothing to do with me. I'm not in them. Uh, or I can't relate. And I think that that is about God as well. Because that's, that's really the whole point. 
of this, if you can follow my jumbled thoughts, that God desires relationship. And there's only so far that we can go, so far that we can go on our own. Uh, there's so far that we can go reading scripture. There's so far that we can go hearing stories. There's so far that we can go doing this, that, and the other. But in the end, it's our, it's praying, it's pouring our own hearts out, it's building our own relationship. And that all happens by God's grace. It's really God leading us there because we can't, we can't break down those walls. Uh, but the beautiful thing is that God promises to show up and promises to bridge that gap. How much more will God pour out the Holy Spirit on us if we ask? God promises to do that, promises to show up, promises that God's already here. Uh, and when we pray, what we're doing is bridging that gap as well. God is bridging that gap because we are acknowledging God is here in this place. When we pray for patience, we acknowledge that God is with us in this room and God can do that. God can grant us patience. When we pray for peace, we acknowledge God is present here and can bring about peace. When we pray for healing, we acknowledge God is here and can bring healing. And that's a beautiful thing. Prayer of bridges gaps. Uh, when we pray before eating, can you pray after that second bite, or that first bite? Can you pray? Do you pray to bless the food to our bodies? Yes, we do. We also pray to acknowledge God's presence with us at the meal, to acknowledge that God uh, brought the food to our table. God is here with us. God brought us together. And in all that, we are trusting. It's about relationship building and about trust. And the story about ask, seek, and knock, again, that one gets translated sometimes as persistence or interpreted about persistence, but I think it's about trust. It's about trust. When you ask for something, what usually happens? You get it or you don't, right? But it's a logical conclusion if you ask, you receive. Uh, if you search, you find. You can't usually find it without searching because that would negate the whole thing. Uh, when you knock, the door is opened. Those are logical things. When we jump, we go higher. When we sit, we're shorter. Uh, when we read, we get words in our head. When we uh, talk to people, we hear things. You know, they're logical, logical steps. When we don't eat, we get hungry. When we eat, we get full. These are things we can expect. When you ask, you receive. When you seek, you find. When you knock, the door is open. When you ask for the Holy Spirit, expect it to happen. Expect the Holy Spirit to show up. Expect the Holy Spirit to be present. Because God wants something more than to pour, the, pour out the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we should expect that. Relationships trust. I think just as prayer bridges gaps between God and us and makes God relevant and present in our lives, prayer also unites us around the world. And that's something that I'm really excited about because in a little while, uh, in three days, I'm going to be on the exact opposite end of the world. Uh, but you know what? We pray the Lord's Prayer in Walker, Minnesota, and in East Iowa, just as we do here in Bonfire, and in Kano, and in Sine, uh, and in Ipo, and in Timbuktu, and everywhere around the world, and in countless different languages. And that unites us all. And that's something I'm really excited about because the world is smaller uh, because God is bigger. And God's presence in each of our lives unites us all. 
And as awkward as this is, I apologize for how awkward this is. If you hear anything today here that clearly I'm grieving because I have to leave, uh, clearly I love you all, and I will see you all. And I am so, so incredibly grateful to God that I've had this time with you. And so thank you. Thank you for that. Know that I will be thinking of you uh, as I pray on the other side of the world. And know that God is with you wherever you go. And keeps us all close, despite distance. So thank you for a wonderful year. Thank you for all the many ways that you have touched my heart. Thank you for your grace uh, in welcoming and accepting me. Thank you for your grace this morning. And you are wonderful. Uh, God loves you, and so do I.